virtual reality. So I just got back um, tonight, kind of late on Monday, from meeting with this uh, Paris Opera Company, or Paris glass manufacturer doing something that's a little bit like Google Glass, um, like an augmented reality, super titles kind of thing, where it's very focused, you know, kind of one use kind of thing right now, but it's these glasses that patrons could put on when they go see, like, say, an opera in a different language, and instead of having to stare off at some big super title projected thing off in the distance, everyone would be able to see, you know, the subtitles or super titles in their little Google Glass experience. Um, pretty cool, yeah, good technology, a lot of potential, especially with it being that focused, because I think some of the problem with Google Glass for people was, you know, that you could be recording things and there's other apps and people just kind of find it kind of douchey. So the idea that everyone goes into a theater and everyone's getting the same experience, you know, it's kind of like going to a museum and putting on uh, a headset and being given a tour. Uh, the only thing I couldn't help but think about during this whole presentation, and we established that, you know, the goggles would still cost probably like $1,200 a pop, is that, you know, with my little like $15 uh, lenses uh, hooked up to a phone, I mean, yeah, it'd be heavier, but, you know, it, even if you didn't have everyone using your own phone, like you could buy a pretty capable cell phone to do everything you wanted to on there, plus more VR stuff, plus more augmented reality stuff for 150 bucks. So, you know, maybe it ends up being 200 bucks a pop, uh, which is a lot cheaper than the glass experience. Of course, the benefit of glass is the miniaturization and soft face, but I kind of like the idea of doing like an opera glasses kind of thing where you could like hold up your phone or whatever and be like, oh yes, I see the show with the extra digital information. Yeah, because on-site opera has still expressed interest in me um, pursuing this, you know, little libretto thing that I, I wrote an outline for that would kind of take advantage of augmented reality in kind of an interesting way, a la Golden Compass, a la, or The Subtle Knife, um, a la The Subtle Knife, a la um, <laughs> various movies that involved alternate realities, portals, that kind of thing. Um, Half-Life, I guess, is another good example. Um, anyway, so that was a, a fun evening. Always cool to hook up with Onsite Opera. They're a really cool company run by really cool people doing really cool operas. And so, who knows? Like, it's kind of fun having something kind of in the on the back burner that maybe will come to fruition in a few years. I would still love to get my friend Jeff Pinar, a very talented opera singer, involved in this production, should it ever come to pass. Um, that'd be really cool. So that's where that is. Um, Equinox, I got confirmation today that they do want me to do like a full, you know, normal renders, VR panoramas, VR walkthrough, phone experience, like all these different things. And um, yeah, fully modeled room and all that. Um, but we're trying to figure out, yeah, just some details about like what makes sense in terms of payment, because like I've done all these things individually, but I have no idea how to combine everything, because I'm still not sure how much overlap there will be in terms of work, like how much of the stuff I'm doing with V-Ray renderings ultimately will transfer over to a game engine, or do I need to redo all the materials from scratch? Uh, that's what I'm figuring out, and this could be really fun, so I hope, I hope this first kind of test project uh, goes well. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where VR is right now. Um, could be really fun. And, um, anything happened in my office with that? No. Nothing happened in my office with VR right now, except that I'm playing a little bit with Unreal, and, oh, I guess I can mention that I, I had a really fun job figuring out how to, uh, render to texture, which is where you set up, like, a certain lighting scenario, and Unity does this virtually automatically now, but in 3ds Max with V-Ray, setting up some really nice lighting, and then basically baking all the shadows and light and everything into the model so then it hadn't even occurred to me that you could do this but you could render an animation within 3ds max and then as long as you know the lighting isn't changing or anything it would be super quick because it doesn't have to calculate you know lights or anything like that you're faking it by you know baking all the shadows and everything into there and then on a similar note i figured out how to um basically deal with making a low polygon model look more um, high polygon, and so the t way I did this test was I took a, a simple teacup, kind of your standard 3D model, and I added a bunch of like noise to it so it's just really bumpy and high poly, and then I did a projection render, I guess it's called render to texture with a projection map, um, where I was basically, t I had that high poly teacup overlapping a low poly teacup, and then I just had it rendered a normal map, which is like a bump map, or I don't know how much you know about 3D rendering and that kind of stuff, but it's a way to tell a uh, rendering engine like how to treat light, and so it it's, looks better than a bump map. It, it, the colors are different when it comes out, 
But anyway, you can do that. A lot of uh, material textures have that, like brick or concrete and that kind of thing. Um, but then also, yeah, you can do it with a specific object where you're trying to make a low poly object look more like a high poly object. And then if you're using level of detail, you can make it so that when you reach a certain closeness, it'll kind of seamlessly swap over to um, the high poly object. And if you play video games, this is something that should look pretty seamless, but you'll notice sometimes like low poly to high poly models kind of popping into each other. Uh, but anyway, that's fun. I'm really enjoying exploring the stuff. And man, I would love to just be doing VR stuff all the time. It's really cool. And um, yeah, we'll see if there's any announcements coming up for uh, some of this new VR stuff. We'll see. Oh.